If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org. Lakeland PBS presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. Today we're going to give a tour on some of my items in my antique building. We just like collecting old stuff and we started small and just kept buying and buying and all of a sudden we had a lot of stuff. I think the first thing I start with is this neat old camera that was used from the old west days. It's the one that you hold up the flash and it goes woof and you see a lot of them in the old western movies still. And we have the old full size Elvis which we got in Chicago. Carol and I go to Chicago every November to a huge antique show and we bought Elvis there and we bought a few other items there. We bought that silent movie projector from 1906 in Chicago. Lots of posters from different Elvis movies. And then we got a popcorn machine that we got just 20 some miles west of us in Perm. It didn't work when I received it but I had a gentleman repair it and we have made a couple batches of popcorn with it. So, And then this projector here came from we got it in Brainerd and it came from Minneapolis. Back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s was huge for these wall boxes. You'd go into a restaurant, you sit down in your booth and there was a wall box and you could put your nickel or dime in there and play your favorite songs on the jukebox that was over in the corner. You're not gonna see very many mixers around with three beaters. Of course, everything is standard with two beaters. And this thing here is a flower sifter which you sift your flour and up here you have your... This is our first stove we bought and this is made in 1929. And then we have a bread making machine here from 1904. And it just purchased this a week ago and all the parts are inside for making bread. But probably the coolest thing on this wall is that vacuum cleaner. It's from 1911 and you take the top handle and you pull up on that to suck the dirt up into there. And it has a filter system in there. But I think we all realize it would have been a lot quicker to use a broom and a dustpan. But this was the start of the vacuum cleaner business. And this is a neat round old stove from 1899. It's bigger than most wood stoves. You see most of them are 12 or 14 inches and this is a 20 inch. So this was made for a bigger building. And it's definitely all usable. It, every, there's no cracks or holes or anything in there. You can just use it by just putting the stove pipe on there. And of course we have some nice old pictures. A few of them like Little Richard and Bobby Lee and them. Carol and I went and saw them and they we lucky enough to get them autographed and really easy to visit with and that. And we got a couple of sinks. There's a lot of cloth foot bathtubs around, but very few of them are in a four foot. Most of them are five and a half or six. And this is a four foot. And then we have this toilet that's on the wall, which easy flushers because they got them high up. And that came from Great Falls, Montana. Seen it advertised and I bought it over the phone and I have a friend that has a store out in Great Falls. So the man delivered it there. And, and then later I picked up the product when I met that gentleman from the store. This is a couple of neat TVs by Philco. They came out with these in the 50s thinking this was the, gonna be the big thing. And it actually ended up bankrupting Philco. They went bankrupt over these TVs. They went over so poorly and the quality of the TV wasn't that good. And I have a little article that I picked up, I put on here from the, off the internet showing what happened, but they filed bankrupts and what have you. Anyway, and then this is a neat pho little phonograph here, which has got the cylinder, and it's in pretty darn nice shape for 100 years old. And we played it a few times, but mainly just here for looks, so. And then my wife, Carol, when she was in high school, she kept all our high school buttons and a little odds and ends, a little jewelry and all that stuff, so we have it all on display. When I was a senior in high school, we went on a bus trip to Minneapolis to the University of Minnesota, a school trip. And every, everybody that got off the school bus, they handed us a four pack of cigarettes when we were seniors in high school. Today, they'd have a heart attack if they passed out of cigarettes to anybody. This is a cream separator that is one of my favorite items in the whole building. It's a cream separator with a square tub. I, I, I grew up on a farm and I've seen a lot of cream separators, but I've never seen one with a square tub. They're all always around. 
And this thing is made before electricity on the farms. They have a treadmill. You can either run it with a dog or a goat or a sheep. All he does is stand there and run, and it turns the separator, and it separates the cream from the milk. And then I actually have another treadmill right behind it that runs a washing machine from 1888. It's not in quite as nice a shape, but this is a butter churn that actually makes 17 gallons of butter. This is actually was made to run on a treadmill also. You could either stand here and rock it to make your butter, or you could have a treadmill like this for $16. You could buy the treadmill. This was made in 1877. And then right, right behind that is an apple press. And that's from 1860s. And this is made for making wine or apple juice, or you just put your apples in there, turn the crank, smash the apples, they go down in that little tub, you slide it over here, and you turn the crank to smash all the juice out, and it has a little hole on this tray, and it runs, your juice would run in there. And this is kind of a neat singer from 1896. The back here is just some washing machines. The cool one is this one right here. This has an electric motor on it, and this was made in 1918. And there was not a lot of electricity in 1918, so I would assume it was a fairly well-to-do family that owned this washing machine. I got a nice organ we bought in Wisconsin about five, six years ago, and it was actually made in 1879. And I'm not an organ player, but we've had a few people here that have played it, and it plays very well. I can, I can show you the noise it makes. And that's, I don't play. But for a 140-year-old machine, I think it's pretty awesome. And, you see a few radios around like this. It's before AM, actually. It's a very old radio, has no volume control. If it's too loud, you just turn it off the station a little bit. And you see a few of these radios around, but you see very few stands. The stand is your speaker. This is a trunk that uh, we bought quite a few years ago, and it's a humpback, and it's full with old ladies' clothes, and of course, we got the mothballs just like they had in the old days. And Carol, we just found out one thing about trunks that have the dome on. They was normally owned by the rich people. They came out with the idea, if they have a dome top, their trunk always got put on top of the pile, and all of the trunks with the flat tops was on the bottom. So these people decided, oh, we'll make a dome, our trunk will be on the top. It won't get damaged, so. And then, of course, we have our 50 soda fountain area, which I'm quite proud of this. We keep thinking we're done with it. We got everything we can have, and I'll be darned I find something else I gotta squeak in or put in, but it's getting to the point, it's full. Monarch ice cream was huge in Wydena for years, and it went out of business probably back in the 50s or 60s, but we ended up with a few posters, and I wanna make sure we keep that around for people to remember about Monarch. This is the back of a 1956 Chevy. Just took the trunk off and built a seat in there and got the lights hooked up and kind of fits in with the soda fountain. This jukebox was purchased in 1998. It was the very first item that we purchased in this building. And we played somewhere between four and 5,000 records on this jukebox. And I'll come out here at night and I'll just come over and punch buttons. I don't even care what song comes up. And, it plays awesome. It's a 1954 model, yep. and it's got awesome sound for 63 years old. That bicycle up there is probably one of the coolest items, too, in the building. It's made in 1898. It has wooden rims, wooden chain guard, and a wooden chain back fender. And then we have our pop machines. That We have a Pepsi that we just purchased about a month ago. It's a very rare one. You don't see. That's the only one I've ever seen like that. And then we have a few other Coke machines. This is somewhat common, and this is a smaller model. And you don't see a lot of that one, so that's probably got more value than all the rest put together. And then we have all our signs. We've got s &H green stamps. And this is another neat item. Before they had the quart cans of oil, they would use, they had, this is what they had in the service stations. They would use a deal like this. They come over here, put that on there, fill up your quart, then put the cap on, and as soon as you put the, take your cord away, it would come back, and all your grips would grip back into your container. And then you just put this in your car, and you don't have the cork can to throw away. And then we go into my gas pumps, and this particular pump came from a small town by Bluegrass. 
just northeast of Widena. And it came from the central store, and this had a 34 volt motor in there that ran off a windmill charger. Then we have this drag line that came from the 50s carnival. You had your jackknives or silver dollars or all that laying out there, and you put your quarter in there and you turn the crank, and I haven't got them set up to work right now, but they do work. This is an ice cream cart that we bought from Vancouver in Canada about two and a half years ago. So you have dry ice in here and you have all your treats in here. And in the front, it has a door to put all your little uh, papers and what have you for that. And you're going down the road and let, let, them know, let them know you're coming. And the next thing we're gonna look at is our jail. And these are original jail bars from Widena. And then inside the jail, we have a 1800s jail that we went down to Ohio. It's two cells, they have a fold down bunk, and then in the doors, it has a little slot for putting their food through when you feed them. This is the craps table. It was made when it was illegal to shoot crap. So on this table, it has cranks on it. So if the feds was coming, you could take this apart and hide it within two or three minutes. Pretty cool. And then that's an old bathtub from the old cowboys. And you can realize back in them days, uh, everybody was a little smaller than they are today to fit in that. The oldest thing in our building is that fork right back there, and I have no idea how old it is, but it's got wooden times on it. It's wrapped with leather, and it's a six-time fork, and it's got to be 150, 200 years old. Well, if anybody is interested in coming and booking or looking at our collection, uh, just email us, and we'll see if the time works for you and I, and like I say, there's no charge, and we enjoy showing it if we have the time to do it. I love coming out here in the evenings, and putzing around. Just sometimes I just come here, turn the jukebox on and sit in a chair and listen. You know, look around. It's, 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 I enjoy that. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.